Hi, welcome to my channel. I am, um, <laughs> I lit a candle to set the scene. Not really sure it's made much of a difference. Kind of feel like it now just looks like I've got a tiny shrine over in the corner. Welcome to my channel. I thought today I would film just a quick video of five top tips of being a mum with a newborn. I did a Q&A video recently and one of the questions was what I would do differently this time round and it just got me thinking about being a mum of a newborn having already been a mum of a newborn. So first off is trust yourself. We don't give credit for how much your instincts just kick in after you've given birth. The instincts and hormones that take over are just incredible and I think you can feel like you're just drowning in this like completely unknown territory. You are the best person for your baby. And even if they're screaming and crying and they've got colic or reflux, or they're not, they, don't, they don't settle, they don't like to be on their front, they don't like to be on their back. Like there's obviously so many things that can happen that make it a lot more complicated and not just a nice kind of simple transition into parenthood. But regardless of what they're going through, just knowing and trusting that actually you are all they need and they've they've lived inside you for nine months and so what they want more than anything is just to be close to you to be held if you're having a hard day and they're screaming and crying you just can't you can't get them to settle just to not be hard on yourself to not think that you're an awful parent to not think that you don't know them and that someone else should be looking after them actually you know them better than anyone else number two pick and choose the advice that you take People are very forthcoming with their advice. People just happily kind of offload everything that they think about raising a child onto you as soon as you've got a baby. And I think it's just really important to be aware of what advice you're taking on and what advice you're like, cool, great, and then you're just like leaving and ignoring. So for example, with sterilizing, we decided that we weren't gonna sterilize Jet's dummies and bottles and things. M my sister's raising her children in Africa they don't have sterilizers, all those extra gadgets that they try and convince you to buy. And I've been really inspired by the way she raises her children. But I was really surprised when we said to people that we weren't gonna sterilize. Some people were just quite disproving and quite scathing, like, oh yeah, you will, you'll end up sterilizing, you can't not. You just need to be brave enough to actually think for yourself and think, right, okay, everything, all these different advice we're being given, what, what works for us, what doesn't work for us. There's also advice we got that we loved and I totally took on board. Someone gave us the advice about the three hour routine. I didn't stick to it fiercely, but I definitely found it really helpful. It's three hour idea and you remember it as easy and it's eat, awake, sleep yourself. So at the beginning of each three hours, you feed them. Then you try and encourage them to stay awake so they don't associate feeding with falling asleep and being a comfort thing. So you have feed, then awake, then sleep and then you have some time to yourself and that's like a rough three hour thing of seven ten one four seven ten one four so i found that really helpful being aware of what advice is helpful what advice are you just like no thanks uh number three sadly haters are gonna hate and you just can't avoid it people will judge decisions you make and that just reflects on them, it doesn't reflect on you. I need to practice what I preach myself because even, you know, Jet's 18 months, I'm 18 months into parenthood and still the other day, I was at a TOTS group, I actually wrote a blog about it because I was at this, this cafe and this other mum of all people, not even just someone without a child, gave me a really hard time when Jet snatched a toy from her little girl. I'm obviously trying to discipline him, trying to be persistent and, and strong and, and I want obviously want to raise a child that's kind and shares, but he's also 18 months and you've got to be realistic. She was just really nasty about it and it really knocked me. I, I think of myself as quite like self-assured, quite confident in my parenting and I just felt crap for the rest of the day, felt really shaken. And I think if that had been someone that was maybe newer into their parenting journey, that would have really, really thrown them. I just, just wasn't very kind. But again, I feel like that actually just reflects on her. I mean, what mum would want to make another mum feel like that when they're clearly trying to discipline their slightly cheeky 18 month old? I found having Jet, my heart just feels so vulnerable. And I feel like having given birth, it's just this like raw, beating, feeling thing. <laughs> but anything he does, I cry and I just, just love him so much it's like I almost can't take it but I feel like 
that's okay in my relationship with him but I think in your relationship with other adults you need to kind of like harden your heart back up a bit so that when people do say things you're able to kind of like let it go and not let it affect you and not, not let it knock your confidence and number four in my five top tips don't feel pressured to over prepare again i'm kind of saying this to people that are like me so i'm not naturally a very i'm not a super organized person i'm not someone that really plans in advance but if i'm going on holiday i pack the day before i go not like the week before i don't cook meals and store them cleverly in my freezer i just cook on the day and that's just how i work so if you work differently then maybe ignore this one but for me I'm not super, super organized. And I found it quite stressful, um, people constantly asking me if my hospital bag was packed and if Jet's nursery was decorated, both of which my answer was no, right up until the day he was born. So I didn't pack his hospital bag until I was in labor. Because for me, there were so many things I wanted to take, like my hairbrush, my toothbrush, my hair straighteners, it's all, all, all my hair things. <laughs> um, and I use them all the time, so I don't want to have them packed away. It just wasn't like a practical thing for me. What I did do was I did write a list of everything that I knew I'd want. And then anything that I didn't have, I went out and bought. I didn't have it all packed and ready until, yeah, until I was in labour. And it was actually quite a nice activity to do to keep your mind off it. Because unlike the films, you don't go straight to hospital. I went into labour on the Sunday and then didn't have him until the Wednesday. So I had a lot of time to pack my bag. Nursery. We knew that he was going to be sleeping in our room anyway. He, we had a little cot next to our bed. That was all ready. So I didn't feel the, the urgency to decorate his nursery. And again, for some people, that's just like mentally, it's really nice to help them prepare for the baby. And that's, that's totally fine. But if that's not how you naturally work, don't feel pressured. Or if you've just moved house or whatever your situation is. We, we just recently moved into this house and it just wasn't practical for us to have every room ready. I would have rather had this room ready than, than his bedroom because it, we spent hours and hours and hours in here when he was a newborn but I just felt a bit uh it kind of made me question my parenting and was I going to be a good enough parent that I, I couldn't even prepare his bedroom for him but actually it means nothing and he didn't know or care and he didn't move into his room till he was eight months so I think it was fine in the end and then the same with like taking things for the newborn obviously you don't know what size they're going to come out I just took a few newborn size baby grows and I think in this day and age with Amazon Prime, everything is like one click away. Don't worry if you're not covering like every eventuality. But again, I had felt like in my preparation, I maybe wasn't being thorough enough and it was fine. <laughs> I hope this video doesn't sound like I'm complaining or dissing other people's styles. This is just like five things for me that I know I'm gonna do this next time. Like with this next baby, I'm not gonna feel pressured into having everything perfectly ready or packing every size clothes possible. And obviously for you, that might be something you wanna do, but these are just, for me, this is just what I've been thinking about having gone from having Jet to now having this baby. And number five, just have fun. Just enjoy it. It's so scary how quickly the newborn stage goes. I'd say that they're only a newborn for a month. They're only a real, real, like teeny, teeny newborn for about two weeks. And so just enjoy it and soak it up and take photos and take videos of them when they're doing little snuffly things. Document it and enjoy it and just be in the moment and don't feel bogged down by the feeding and the keeping them alive and the changing their nappy. Have you eaten? Have you slept? Have you washed? But just kind of, I think just like, let go to what this stage is and it's not a stage that lasts forever it can feel in the midst of those late nights and early mornings or whatever it can feel like it's going to last forever but it really doesn't and so just enjoy it and just soak them up and um, we were quite precious with our like with our two week paternity we just went into quite a bubble and we didn't have loads and loads of visitors just a few friends but we kind of set quite a specific time they could come and then family obviously but we just had loads of time as the three of us and it was just really lovely just to enjoy this it's just such a precious stage and you'll never get it again because now with the newborn we'll have jet which is obviously great but it's not that it's not the same thing we just watched endless episodes of friends and we're not going to do that with jet so with your first one it's the only time you'll really get that like bubble experience and so just to enjoy it just to try and find the fun in everything when jet was 
maybe like a week old, 10 days old. He was lying on his sleepy head on his back and he was sick a little bit and then kind of semi choked in it and then swallowed it back down and was just really thrown. And I think he was probably just a bit scared and didn't really know what happened. And we were obviously really frightened as well. And then he was crying loads. And so we phoned triage just to get some advice. And then they said it sounded fine, you know, no need to go in, but just to keep an eye on him. And I just felt really shaken and really, really worried about him. It was also like later on in the evening, so we'd been thinking about going to bed. And I just thought, I'm not gonna sleep. I'm gonna be too worried about him. I wanna kind of know, I feel like just trusting your instincts. And like, I felt like, okay, no, I need to be checking on him quite often. And then the idea of going to bed and setting an alarm for like every hour, I just found really depressing. And so then Henry just, he's great. <laughs> he was like, okay, well, let's, let's make this a fun thing rather than going, to bed and then getting depressed because we can't sleep let's stay here let's like get our duvet onto the sofa and stay up for as long as we need to and we just ended up watching all the toy stories and had a little toy story marathon and jet was actually totally fine but it's just really lovely because actually that night that could have been really stressful and quite scary has turned into one of my fondest memories of having a newborn because we just made it fun rather than let the stress get to you anyway Thank you so much for watching. Those are my five top tips. Please, please, please comment below with what you've learned going from one to two, because I would love, I'd love to hear. There's obviously a lot that I could learn. Have a lovely week and we'll see you soon. Peace out.